Hello, Dan here, 22nd of March, and I'm starting a video today, and I'm going to be making loads of compost over the next year or so. So I'm going to be using this 375 litre container, pot, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to be using mainly grass clippings, cardboard, and fallen leaves from the autumn or the fall. And with regards to composting, a very simple way of looking at it is what you want is half and half. So half of nitrogen, otherwise known as a green, half of brown, otherwise known as a carbon. And have a little reaction together, that combined with some air and also some water could create you absolutely lovely and beautiful compost. So grass readily available for me, I'm a grass cutter, gardener, I cut a lot of grass and I get a lot of grass to use to make compost with. So with regards to browns, using leaves, full leaves, very good. Hopefully you can get some of them from your local woodland or whatever, or your own garden. Do not take them from anywhere though, you're not allowed to. I don't want you to get in any trouble. And you could also use cardboard as well, or a bit of both. So the purposes of today, I'm going to be using mainly grass cuttings, cardboard and autumn, otherwise known as fall leaves. So what I like to do is actually collect quite a lot of compostable matter and I just leave it, sometimes quite a while. So with regards to autumn fall leaves, it's currently March. So, you know, they fell several months ago, didn't they? But, um, you know, you could go out and collect them then or you can go and get them now. There should still be plenty of them and uh, we can start making compost, so let's go. So you can see some grass there, look, and this is probably about three weeks or so since I cut this. It's wet, it's sludgy, and if left on its own, it would eventually turn into compost, but it would take quite some time. So I want to get a nice green-brown nitrogen-carbon balance. So I'm going to put a little bit more grass clippings in there. So more grass. So next to go in is some autumn fall leaves, and that will be a brown, a carbon source. So I'm spreading that about. I think a lot of this is uh, mainly willow leaves, actually. A bit of maple leaves in there as well. And uh, <laughs> a little bit of grass clippings. It was uh, from a lawn I cut that had loads of leaves on this particular lawn at the time. So it's mainly leaves there. So we'll spread that about a little bit. Right, some more grass. So this was cut a little bit more recently, you can see there. So going to put that in. Now what you can do, there's no reason why it has to be layered particularly, you can mix it all up. Some more grass, now this has got a little bit of the old uh, pine tree needles in, but they'll be just fine. They'll rot down eventually, they'll form part of a brown. So I'm just going to turn that over, mix that in nicely. Some more grass some leaves in here, a little bit of grass mixed with it, but uh, mainly leaves. Once again, just going to mix that around. Grass, leaves mainly, grass here. Just try and break up these clumps a little bit. It's not essential, but it can sometimes be nice to do that. And some grass here, it's got a few extra bits in it, leaves and dried grass there or something, but That'll be just fine. So I'll put some cardboard on the top here and I'm just going to squish it down a bit. So a compost bin needs to be wet. Like when you squeeze a bit of it, you want just one or two drops to run out of it. I'm not that specific with mine, but that's sort of like a rough guide generally. So in here, I've got rainwater and also one urination. I use a lot of urine when I make compost because it's very rich in nitrogen, which is, a, as I stated, a very important part of the composting process. Some people aren't into the use of urine. Um, there has been concerns with uh, bacteria in their salts, certain medications people might be on, hormones, etc. But um, there's a, a rich history of using urine, urine, in the making of compost. But um, you make your own decision. Don't have to use it, you really don't. Um, what you can do is just use water like I'm using here. This is rainwater from the water, but or you could um, you could add some sugar in there maybe or some fruit juice or knock up some apples or whatever and put them in for a bit of sugar, but it will help. A bit of the old sugar there. The bacteria like, they like it. There we are. So, right, anyway, that's our mix. And uh, we now put our cardboard on the top 
like that, and uh, we leave it. So all in all from this watering can, it's going to be about 26 litres, about five gallons. Big area, big amount of matter here, and going to get plenty of water on this. So with regards to the applying of urinations, I'm probably going to be putting about three or four on here each day for the foreseeable future. And uh, that should help to kickstart it, if you will, the uh, composting process. So here we are, one week in, it's the 27th of March, and you can see I have now a new tub here. It's about the same size as the other one, 375 litres, and I'm going to now turn this one into that one. It's really handy to have two like this, makes it nice and easy, you can just turn between the two. Now you don't have to have them separate like this because of course it takes up space. What you can do is with regards to storing, you can keep that one on there like that. So what you can do is have it down here, for example now when I'm going to turn it, and then when it's turned put that one on top so you're not using up all the space. Let's take a closer look at it. Take the cardboard off, put that uh, right down there. Right, so, lots of heat there still. Plenty of nitrogen in there. And that's uh, what it looks like. So, we're going to now proceed to turn this one into that one. You can really feel the heat. So this really is working. That's the nitrogen burning off the heat. It's got an earthy smell to this. If you leave it too long festering, you can end up with a real foul stink at the bottom. And when you do end up turning it or emptying it, the smell could be quite overpowering. You really don't want that. So you don't want it too wet and you don't want it to fester. So turning it, getting some air in there, it's a really good thing to do. So a little point here, now this here, you could see, is still quite dry. And this was sort of in the middle of the heap, if you want to call it that, and I've turned it over. So of course, it's not had much of the moisture that came in from the top. So you could take the opportunity to wet the bits that you turn that need some moisture to allow that bacteria to keep working. And Give it a nice bit of moisture. Once again, we're aiming to achieve like a damp sponge that you can get one or two drops of fluid out from. So you can see that's really bulked that up. Nice bit of air in there so the bacteria can keep working. Giving it a bit more water in here. There's uh, six liters or so, one and a half gallons, something like that. This is once again rainwater from the water butt. Cardboard on top, and we shall turn it again a week from today. Hi, here we are on the 3rd of April. So today I'm going to be adding some more to the compost mix, and I'm going to be turning it. So let's have a look at it. You can see what it looks like right now. So we'll uncover it, and that's what it looks like. Give you a close-up. The old fork in there. And there we go, and I really can feel the heat coming up off that. So you don't have to add any more matter to this. You could just keep working with what you've got and make some compost in about six weeks. So I'll show you some here. So I've actually made this compost here in around six weeks. The only difference was when I initially started the composting process, I cut up the matter with a lawnmower and there was less leaves and more cardboard. And here it is. So this is a combination mainly of grass clippings, cardboard and a few leaves. So I'll show you what it looks like here. And it's really good stuff, very moisture retentive, and I've actually set some potatoes in it and also some spinach. So there you go, have a look at that. I haven't set those in that in here, they're in other parts of the garden, but this is what the compost I've got remaining. So you can make this in about six weeks or so. So that's very good. But what I want to do is add some matter to this because I want to keep the compost process going, keep adding to it and get a nice big amount of compost throughout the year. So I've added a load of grass clippings to here. Now, filled it about halfway up. I want to be able to get this on top. So I'm going to stamp this down, standing on the uh, 
card here and uh, push that right in so I can get as much grass in there as is possible. So I'm going to add my layers, or a layer, of my cardboard here. Once again, cardboard being a source of carbon, a brown, and uh, the two work off one another, green and brown, green being nitrogen, and they work off each other and work to create nice, lovely compost for our garden. So I'm going to put some water on this, get the cardboard wet, start the uh, process off a little bit. There is a urination in here as well. Once again, you don't have to use urine. You could just use water. It's rainwater from the water, but I'd rather use rainwater because it won't have things like chlorine in it, etc. you know, which uh, tap water will have probably. And because uh, you don't want to be killing bacteria in there, you want to be allowing it to work. So of course, if you've only got um, tap water, use that, but rainwater if possible. So anyway, nice bit of water there. And once again, turn. Oh, steam. So there we go, that's turned. Nice bit of aeration in there. Then the bacteria work and away we go. Now, what you could do if you wanted was take a bit out of that, you know, ideally before you added any, so like when it was still here. Take some out of it and put it in a container such as this. Take it away and then you can keep turning and working that whilst you're still adding to your compost matter here. So that way you're working on a big clump of it here, but any time you can take a bit out, stop adding to it and keep working on that. And then you'll end up getting that compost quicker than this because you're not adding to it anymore and you just keep working on it. So you could also use, you know, a smaller pot like this, but it's the same process, keep turning it, keep it wet, you know, like a damp sponge so that when you squeeze it, about two or three drops of water come out. And this is a very workable process. You keep, you keep doing this and you'll end up producing quite a bit of compost throughout the year. Anyway, so we're going to give this a bit of water now and um, it, likes a, it likes a bit of that, you know. And um, whilst we're, when we've done that, we're going to put our cardboard on top. So I'm not going to make any videos on this for a few weeks now, because I'm going to be doing the same thing, adding, you know, weekly or every other week to it for the foreseeable future. If I take a bit out, I might make a video then. But uh, anyway, don't know when the next instalment for this series, if you will, this video will come up, but uh, you will see it shortly. Anyway, you got the idea, get to it. 10th of April. So I have put some more grass clippings in the bottom here of this tub and also some cardboard. So when you add the cardboard, you want to make sure you wet it, starts the uh, decomposition process there. There is moisture in fresh grass clippings, but to give it a bit of rainwater like this and it should help. Now turn. It's a little point. You can see there I've got a big clump. If you get big clumps, just break them up a little bit with your fork. I'm noticing a bit of worm activity in here, which is good. So break up your big clumps and they should break down much easier. There we are, all nicely turned. So you can see the green grass on the top here. That was from the bottom of this tub here. So now it's on the top of this one here, which is great because it can now get some oxygen, etc. And I'm going to wet it. Some of it was a little bit dry, I noticed. You wanna make sure that uh, you've got plenty of moisture like that bit there, look. Give it plenty of it because it does need it in order to break down. Now, of course, the weather appears to be improving, which is nice. It's quite warm, especially here in the tunnel. So it's going to be working that much quicker and drying out thus due to the extra heat. So make sure you keep it moist. Here we are, plenty of that on there. <clears throat> and once again, we're going to put the cardboard on top. And this is great because more carbon straight on top of that grass there. And uh, it can cool on it if indeed it needs it. That hole there, by the way, is not deliberate. That's just happened. It doesn't matter. Right, leave that on there and uh, see you the next time. Hi, we're on the 14th of May now and the compost is looking really good. I've been adding to it additional matter every other week or so, something like that. Looks really good. And uh, we'll have a little close up. You can see what it looks like. And I've got a few little plans that we're going to talk about in a moment. So I'll show you some from the top of the heap. So it looks different throughout the heap here because I've been adding matter to it at different times. So at different degrees of 
decomposition. But um, this is what a lot of it looks like. Oh, look at that, really nice, lovely and moisture retentive. So very happy in those regards. So I'm going to turn this today and then I'm actually going to start another pot, tub of compost to try and up the amount of compost I'm creating. So we'll turn this. So I'm getting to the grass now and some cardboard that I put at the bottom of uh, this tub here. I think I did it last weekend. That's really good because that can go on the top there, get some nice oxygen and uh, the decomposition process you know, can occur better because it's getting more air. So uh, really good. Right, so it's all turned now. Of course, it's bigger here than it was in there because as I've turned it, air's got in it, oxygen, etc. And it's sort of fluffed it, puffed it up a bit, which is what we're trying to achieve. Anyway, so left a little bit of grass in there. The main reason is because I can't get that in there now without it all falling off. So what would have been ideal, what I should have done really was got some of the more mature compost from down there when I turned it, put it in a bucket and then put some of that in there now for, you know, the additional bacteria that's got to help the decomposition process here but uh, you can't have everything and at the end of the day there will be microbes bacteria helpful uh, what's it's in here to help with the process but anyway what we're going to be doing now is exactly the same more or less half and half roughly mix of green and brown in the case of what i'm going to be using here the majority will be grass clippings and cardboard so i'm going to put a load in there now so got a load of this card paper or whatever it is that's good stuff for this that can go in there as I'm adding the cardboard and the card paper, just starting the decomposition process with uh, some, <clears throat> excuse me, rainwater from the water butt. Don't add too much water to freshly cut grass clippings because there's quite a lot of moisture already in them. It will decrease as time goes by, but uh, if you add too much water to, to fresh grass clippings, it can go very slimy. So uh, take care there. So there we are, all turned. Just going to wet this cardboard on top here. And there we are, the bit that was on top of this one I've actually had to use in there because I'm getting a bit low on cardboard supplies but I should be able to source some more soon, hopefully. Anyway, now, I've dramatically increased the amount of labour involved here so always be aware that if you do things like this you know, you're making yourself more work but in my opinion, if you can budget the time, effort, etc, etc it is well worth it. So, the way I'll be turning this from now on is when this is all clear goodness knows when uh, I'm going to be able to clear all that but anyway I'll put um, maybe a membrane on the floor or maybe not there's a concrete hard standing on this part of the polytunnel and I'll turn it by moving from here to there and then back again this one here there to there and back again so I'm probably going to be turning each one once every other week now with a uh, working and all that jazz I don't think I've, I can uh, really budget the time to turning each one every week but anyway you get the idea of what I'm doing and I shall uh, see you soon. Hello, 22nd of May and today I'm going to be turning this bin here. So this has the more mature compost in it. You can see I've added some more grass clippings to it over time. So a lot of the compost here is quite well underway now. I might even take some out and use it for another project. So uh, we're going to turn this and uh, see what we've got underneath. Really can see the steam working absolutely beautiful this is so I'll show you some of this you can see there's still a bit of grass clippings in there I've added at later dates but have a look at that so I'm actually going to be putting some of that in this dustbin here I'm going to take it and uh, grow some stuff in it so uh, it'd be really nice it's nice to have some compost here that's uh, usable So I've got my dustbin compost here. I'm going to get down as far as I can because this will sink. So I want as much compost in there as possible. So this is very moisture retentive. And uh, well, that'll probably be enough. I could use this for something else. So I'm actually going to expand on this little project. And what I'm going to do is fill up this dustbin here. So I'm going to be planting out my dustbins filled with my own homemade compost. It was some really lovely plants. So we're going to have cucumber market more here and I'm going to probably put about four in there. It'd be very interesting to see you know the cucumbers all trailing down the sides. It'd be really good. And here we're going to have 
Dill's Atlantic Giant, so it's a giant pumpkin, that can go in there. And at the back here, we're going to have Hokkaido Winter Squash. So let's get planting. That's about it. Don't let them dry out, and uh, we shall await our crops. Hello, so 8th of June, it's probably about a month or so since I made an instalment on this video, but uh, the compost is broken down considerably. I've not added anything else to this since I made my last update on this video. So I'm going to be potting some of this up and setting some squash and some courgette plants. So let's have a little look at it. So there you go. It's a little bit less broken down than would be ideal, but I'm going to give it a go. And I have here, I think it's a 35 litre container, something like that. And here I have a recycling tub, which is probably about 40 litres, something like that. So I'm going to fill those, those up with the uh, compost from here. So that's what it looks like close up. And it's going to fill these up. Best practice to let compost fully break down before you use it. So um, do your own research as to whether you think this is the right thing for you to do. But uh, I want to try and see just what this is like and what it's made of at this early stage. So since you saw this compost last, I've been turning it every week. So it's been working, it's gone down considerably, so it should be relatively well broken down. So here I am in the corner, and I'm gonna be planting a squash called North Georgia Candy Roaster in the green container, and in the pot, I'm gonna put a variety of courgette called Burpees Golden, like a zucchini courgette. So there they go, let's have a close up. Firm them both in, and uh, hopefully we shall now get some lovely crops off of all of these. So down here, I've got some smaller uh, containers, <coughs> excuse me, and also some seed potatoes. These are first early potatoes variety, Swift. Right, so here they are placed in the corner, and uh, let's see how everything here does. Hello, so here we are on the 16th of August, and you can really see Squash Corner is coming along absolutely amazingly. So what we're going to do here is pick this delicious Market more cucumber, absolutely wonderful. One cucumber. And there's another one here. There's plenty more baby ones coming as well. So let's uh, have this one as well. Look at those, look. Two absolutely lovely market more cucumbers. Hello, 28th of August, and more cucumbers are here. Variety market more, lovely jubbly. Let's have this one, nice. And there is also another one I have noticed here. This too is also nice. So we have two lovely cucumbers there. And another one here. Okay, so 31st of August, and I'm looking at the pumpkin here, and I'm just gonna harvest it, because I've noticed it has a bit of rot on it there, which is a real shame and uh, this is what's happened there. So I'll just uh, show you what it looks like. <laughs> now this is very disappointing. I'm uh, wondering if it's because it was sitting in water in the tray down there, maybe when it rained a few days ago, and maybe this is uh, what happened. But it uh, would have been nice to have waited and uh, seen what this looked like when it matured, but uh, never mind. And. Uh, I like to show things that don't quite go well as well as things that do, but anyway, there we are. What can I say? But we will uh, follow a failure up with another success. So we've got another cucumber there, and we're going to have a courgette as well. So let's, uh, there we go, twist that off. So that's off the courgette plant. So. We've got a nice courgette there. So a courgette and a cucumber. So 3rd of September and I'm going to harvest the North Georgia candy roaster squash and also the Uchiki Curry squash. So I think I've figured out what happened with regards to the pumpkin and I'm absolutely kicking myself as to what probably happened. So you can see the apple tree here. I think an apple fell down there, or more than one apple, and then that proceeded to rot, and that was touching the pumpkin, and that then uh, introduced the rot, and I lost the pumpkin. There we are. The other 
theory that I've maybe, or I've come up with, is maybe asking for a giant pumpkin to grow in a confined area, you know, the amount of compost there, is quite a big thing to ask, you know, because the plant, of course, wants to make a giant pumpkin. So maybe a feed with a higher high potassium feed, like organic tomato feed, would have been a good idea, or maybe put some wood ash in there. But um, I suspect what it is, is because what there was, was the apple fell, rotted, and then rotted the pumpkin. Another theory I maybe, or I have come up with, is maybe the warm weather this year and the confined space in which the pumpkin was growing maybe because of the stress etc the plant produced a pumpkin quicker and it thus increased its life cycle therefore it resulted in the pumpkin rotting early maybe it was ready a few weeks ago who knows but i suspect the most likely cause is i don't see them down there now rotten apples falling down or apples falling down and then causing the rot on the pumpkin but never mind I'm not going to dwell on that disappointment and going to get positive now and harvest a North Georgia candy roaster and also the Uchiki Curry squash. Okay, so down here, here I am with all the rotten apples and we're going to have North Georgia candy roaster. Done. There we are. Lovely jubbly. Got. That's certainly a unique looking squash. Let's uh, have a close up of it. So there we are. North Georgia candy roasters. So very interesting squash. They can get bigger than this. You remember I was growing it in a container, not particularly big one for a hungry plant such as a squash. So these can get quite big, but uh, you know, there's enough nutrients in that growing medium and enough of it to produce a decent sized squash. So of course I'm very happy with that. Next thing, we're gonna have the Uchiki Curie. Then after that, we're gonna harvest the first early potatoes I set. Blimey, what kind of position is this? Right, so let's have the Uchiki Curie squash. There we are. There it is. So we've got an Uchiki Curie squash there, otherwise known as onion squash. So uh, two successful harvests there. We'll have another courgette whilst we are here. <laughs> and it also has a rotten apple touching it, yeah. Clever boy Dan, learn from one's errors, can't we? Let's see what uh, potatoes we've got. So as you can see, a very small uh, harvest from those potatoes there, but don't look into that too much. They probably ended up waterlogged and you may remember the tubers that I planted were a bit shriveled and weren't particularly great anyway so there is that and I also made another batch of compost very similar to this and I had a very good yield of potatoes from that so that video will be coming up I've already filmed it quite a while ago I've just got to edit it so for a more sort of accurate representation of the potatoes this compost can produce you're probably better off you know taking that one more into account than this but um and there is at least a small yield there anyway. Some lovely yields there, so happy with those. Is that compost perfect? No, certainly not for growing crops like these that uh, would appreciate a higher potassium level. But of course, one could consider, like I mentioned earlier, something like organic tomato feed, liquid feed, put that on. You could consider something like banana peels if you've got enough of them. I've even thought about uh, drying out beetroots and uh, making like a powdery sort of thing with them because I know they're high in potassium. But uh, you get the idea, plenty of uh, higher potassium sources out there, wood ash, etc. So uh, you can always look into that. Anyway, next question. On this bed here, I'm going to be putting that compost on there to further enrich it. So I'm going to be emptying those containers, the dustbins, the uh, recycling containers, etc. Pots, going to go on there and that will further enrich the bed. And I'm going to be, uh, you know, growing winter crops in there. So there we are, absolutely wonderful. So comments, questions, whatever's you've got on that one. It's a little sort of base that we can all work with and improve over time, but that's a nice medium, sort of just, uh, you know, a very simple way of getting some nice compost, which one can, as I stated, improve on. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. The other video will be up soon. When it is up, I will link that in the description box below so you could see 
the potato harvest. <coughs> Excuse me. Moi. So you can see that uh, this can work for growing potatoes as well. Anyway, thanks for viewing. If you've uh, got this far to the end of the video, because I imagine it's a long one now, uh, let me know. And uh, thank you for doing that if you've managed to bear it this long. Subscribe if you wish, like and share it also if you wish. Thanks for your time and uh, get composting.